Hello, and welcome to the Analyst Angle, brought to you by The Cube. I'm Rob Streche, lead analyst with The Cube Collective. Today, we're going to discuss the trends in the data market from a skill set side of things. To help break this down, I'm joined by Alex Hutchins, co founder of DataWorks. I'm so excited about this because Alex and I have been talking through this for almost about a year now and really looking at it from different sides where I was hiring people in this space, he was helping recruit in this space, and DataWorks really works worldwide helping people build out their data teams. And he brings a really unique perspective to why things are the way they are. So I wanna welcome Alex and bring you on board here. Thanks, Rob, appreciate you uh, you know, welcoming me to the show. So uh, yeah, excited to be part of this and yeah, I suppose, you're right. I think it's been uh, about a year of discussions and I think a year of real real change from that kind of post-COVID crazy market where people couldn't hire enough to the kind of point we find ourselves now, which maybe is a, a bit more normal now, I think, versus maybe six, seven months ago. But yeah, it's exciting to speak about this. Yeah, I, I again, you know, when we were talking you know, briefly before this, I, I think it's been really interesting to see how the market has changed. I mean, the last two weeks, I was at VMware Explore. Uh, they had their Spring One conference, which for the first time, they brought developers to VMware Explore uh, to kind of bring together some of the ecosystem that they have. And then uh, the next week, I was at Google, Google Cloud Next, which has a very different vibe. Uh, so, it, you know, more, uh, I would say more director, VP level, have projects, looking to get things done. And it was very interesting to see the people and the skill sets that they were bringing, the people that were you know, mulling around, uh, grabbing tchotchkes from the different vendors and, and doing that. And I think, you know, actually it's symptomatic of what's going on. But I, I, I wanna kind of get your read because you know, DataWorks works all over Europe, in the US and other places. And I know just from knowing some of your other customers where you've been able to hire even in Asia Pack and things of that nature. And the skill sets and the state in general of tech and recruiting, you know, what are you seeing uh, these days? What's What's been the state of it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really good point. I think if I'm, if I'm honest, it's been, confusing i think we got to uh, this time last year and companies were investing companies were hiring there were obviously those kind of uh, murmurings of uh, not not everything was okay on the horizon but then we companies continued you know they continue to invest these data and tech teams continue to get fat they continue to grow um and then it was i think kind of december last year we started to get this feeling you know there's thing, things are slowing down here offers were being rescinded um, those requisitions were no longer kind of uh, in our pipeline and we thought let's get to grips with what's actually happening here and then obviously January everyone can think back to then you're kind of waking up early Jan and there's the, the big players out there you know the kind of uh, the fangs as you call them they were all talking about layoffs I think it was 89 90,000 layoffs announced in January alone um, so that automatically sent shockwaves across the rest of the kind of sector you then had that kind of trickle down effect over the preceding kind of six and seven months. Um, I think there was, a, there was a TechCrunch article that reported there was 225,000 layoffs in tech alone. Um, so that obviously created a huge amount of competition for the kind of vacancies that were left. Um, a lot of nervousness and uncertainty in the market. And that was across 900 firms, but obviously that is led by the larger players. So. It's interesting you're saying about kind of going to the Google Next conference is obviously those larger players now are beginning to make signs and sounds of rehiring. I don't think we're going to see what we saw post COVID, um, but we are beginning to hear of a bit more confidence. But yeah, I think it's companies didn't really factor in inflation, obviously paying back the COVID loans, you know, the war in Ukraine, political issues, um, AI, you know, all of a sudden these larger companies think hang on a minute we've got to take stock of where we are consumer confidence is low um so yeah i think it's been a 
it's been a humbling experience for those recruiters out there. I think a lot of those hiring managers have probably taken stock and thought, hang on a minute, if we had our time again, we might have done it differently. But yeah, we're in a slightly more confident space now. Uh, but generally, tech was really adversely affected by that slowdown. Yeah, and that makes total sense. I think, like you were saying, with the FANG group in particular, obviously, I was at AWS for a little bit. And uh, some of my friends are actually posting jobs now, which uh, I know had gotten, they've been trying to hire into those positions or were trying, they had the recs end of last year. They got frozen, not killed per se, at the beginning of the year as the layoffs happened. Now there seems to be a thaw. I wouldn't say they're, they're all open or coming back the way they were, but I think they're also hiring for different skill sets, which kind of brings me into uh, you know our favorite topic, which is you know state of recruiting and data, because I, I think to me, it's, it's always been interesting. I think when I was on in January, we talked about data product management, and mm -hmm. I want to kind of hit on that as well, because I, I think it's a very interesting thing. But what are you seeing from the state of recruiting in data and data teams? Yeah, you're completely right. It's an area that we're hugely passionate about and have been tapped into for about the last 10, 12 years. And I think what you saw early on in the new year uh, was that middle management layer. Uh, and what I mean, they're kind of, they're not owning the strategy, they're not necessarily hands-on, um, that layer was decimated. You, you know, there was some cracking uh, management layer that unfortunately were laid off and actually the focus was really on those kind of more hands-on engineers and those individual contributors. Um, I think what we also saw, well, in fact, what we definitely did see, companies still invested, but they certainly were more hesitant about getting too fat, you know, over hiring again. Um, there was definitely, from the conversations we had, and we we work with earlier stage startups and some more established businesses who are re-platforming, bringing in maybe the new modern data tools. So we've got a pretty good view of, you know, who's hiring and who's firing. And actually a lot of the conversations, AI, you know, it became very evident a lot of companies are going to invest in that and they were looking at what they could automate uh, and who ultimately they could potentially replace. We saw this impact, the analyst layer. Um, you obviously had data science, which was, I think, seven, eight years ago was the most highly regarded and most in-demand uh, position with analytics uh, at that point. And now, unless you have deep domain knowledge within a respective discipline or an industry understanding, they are, they are really struggling now. Uh, and that's not through want of trying or their education or their investment in the PhDs and the masters. That's just down to the fact companies are looking at that kind of that mid to lead level, hands-on, yeah. strong programming experience, um, I think what has been encouraging, um, salaries have remained steady, you know, 2021, you know, the people were jumping, getting 20, 25%, 30% in some cases, uplifting comp, but now people are moving like for like, but what we've not seen, certainly in data and AI products, certainly in those analytics and data engineering domain and ML and ML ops, those salaries have, have remained quite steady. Um, so I think that's take some confidence from that um and i suppose to close that part off candidates with those kind of latest tech tools modern data tools uh on that kind of analytics and data engineering piece are still in demand we've seen a big push towards the infrastructure led data roles the data ops is becoming a thing ml ops is is hugely in demand um so yeah it's been a real I think it's been a realignment. Uh, companies and teams got too big. Their analytics yeah. and data teams yeah. got too fat. But now companies are taking stock and think, hang on a minute, do we need three engineers? Right. Can we do with yeah. one and bring some cool automation in here? Are they being impacted by the return to office? I mean, we're seeing it here that it's 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 a real, it's a very interesting challenge. People have you know dispersed themselves. I, I know uh, one really good uh, cloud architect, for instance, and he can do data architecture as well, who's in northern uh, New Hampshire, which, you know, again, that's uh, the company he was talking to actually has an office in New Hampshire, but it's a two hour drive in. Mm. And he's, they, they, the requirement was a week a month. 
what are, what are you seeing from the the new hybrid as well it's back, you know, hybrid roles are, are back. Uh, we're fortunate we have the view of our European business as well. Uh, and you can look, we have a French business and uh, not many more countries or kind of uh, spaces are more rigid in terms of their work pattern than the, the French. Uh, and equally, they've now begun to open up their opportunities or did have, you know, post-COVID, this kind of hybrid um kind of model but then a lot of those companies were expecting people to come back into office but they've remained hybrid now and in the US that was typically a very kind of remote friendly country um if you're an earlier stage business uh, you're looking to build a culture you're looking to really integrate everyone into the, your ethos hybrid is back they're centered around those major cities you know, Boston New York you got Denver, Miami's obviously uh, gathered some momentum recently. Um, and I think that has, you know, th there's a compensation element to this as well, where people are, will be expecting slightly more money because obviously that will involve some travel that will involve right. them giving up their home office. So it's definitely back. Um, it, it's funny, isn't it? I think, obviously I know you worked at Amazon as well, but you've got these companies who are making these noises about return to office. And there's been a lot of press around what was the motivation for that? Was that to kind of clean the deck slightly and then go again? Or actually are we in a position where these companies generally want you to come back into the office? It's uh, an interesting point, but I think hybrid is back. Fully on site, I don't think we'll ever come back, but hybrid definitely is. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing that, I mean, again, having friends over at Amazon, I, I was talking to one where uh, he is down in San Francisco, but his office that he's attached to is in Seattle. And they're like, hey, if you want to remain here, uh, you got to come to Seattle. And it's not a commute thing. It's a we expect you in the office every every week. Uh, all full time, wow. so I think it, I think it's going to get more interesting before it before it normalizes because I think there's still going to be blowback uh, in this space. And uh, 100. Yeah. percent And yeah. I think on that yeah. point, Rob, I think is in COVID, people were displaced. You know, people uh, they they left the expensive cities. You know, the San Francisco's, the the, the more expensive places to go to the, the cheaper destinations to to kind of maybe assume a slightly different lifestyle to what they previously had. Uh, and I think it would be wrong of companies to now expect everyone to give that up, right. to then give that up and return back to what we used to have. Because let, let's be frank, not a lot of people are really happy with coming in every single day to an office. So it'd be interesting to see where this lands. Though There will be those companies that will sweep up by saying fully remote, high comp, amazing benefits. Um, but a lot of candidates as well, I think it's worth saying they... They want to come into hybrid uh, offices. I say the majority are, depending where they are on that journey in their life, they are they are keen to see people. I, I agree. I, I couldn't agree more. And so let's kind of you know what are customers telling us about you know this and and how the market is because I, I think it's been very telling. And you're seeing one side of it. I'm seeing another side of it. Mm. And I, I think again, it's a very interesting. I think dichotomy of what's going on within the market because if you, for instance, if you look for prod product managers on LinkedIn, uh, just in the U.S., there's over 111,000 openings on LinkedIn right now for product managers. You st if you then scale that back to I want data product managers, there's 37 <laughs> in the U.S., which yeah. to me is like actually mind-blowing based on what I think people need in their organizations when they're dealing with this data. But what are, what are you hearing from customers and about the market in general? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a really good point. I think, um, as I alluded to at the, the top of this, they the amount of redundancies and sheer scale of people that were let go and the, the quality of talent that was ultimately let go led to a huge amount of competition for far fewer, fewer vacancies. Um, that coupled with 60,000 talent acquisition professionals who were laid off in the first six months of this year, that's created this kind of funnel effect um, and a real bottleneck for people being a considered for vacancies, moving through a process. I think an average 
process last year should take 28 days from resume submission to offer. And this year to date, it's nearly double that. So it kind of shows wow. you the slow uh, moving beasts that these companies have become, irrespective of size. So I think you're on, on two sides. You've got companies who are not struggling to hire. They've got a great brand. They're, you know, they, they have a slick operation where it comes to recruitment and they are not struggling. Um, on the other hand, uh, you've got those companies have so many applications who are not not ideally suited uh they're creating a poor candidate experience um so that's the ones that are hiring i think on, on the flip side of that you've had that real kind of panic stations the shutters pulled down we're not looking to hire we're going to just make do with what we've got create more work for the team we have and really see where this runway from a cash perspective kind of sees us and i think that's a good point on on the vc stuff we've had this record vc investment years post covid you've now got high levels of vc activity in terms of the ai piece and on your point about ai and data product i think that is a really that is an area of seeing tremendous appetite to hire but people are still trying to define what that looks like and how that ultimately brings bottom line value and i think where we are today companies are beginning to say we need to fire we need to evolve we need to um, we need to grow we need to innovate so those companies are beginning to hire however there's a real nervousness about over hiring making layoffs um, i think ask me three months ago it really was you know a bit doom and gloom and everyone seemed quite down on their luck but today after the week we've seen it, it's really picked up yeah, no, I, I think we, we're seeing a similar thing is that it's picked up, but it's also picked up for specific skill sets as well. And yep. it, it's, it's not necessarily the skill sets people were hiring for. What are, what are some of the skill sets you're seeing uh, that are in demand? Yeah, so machine learning engineers um, and what we've seen is, is, is very strong experience, which is very niche at the moment in fine tuning those LLMs. I know you hugely passionate and knowledgeable about that space. I don't pretend to know exactly what they do, but I, uh, I can certainly say those companies who are bringing those models internally, trying to make them fit for their purpose, they are now on the hunt for those engineers with experience of fine tuning those models. And that is niche. Um, yeah. That ultimately yeah. leads to an increase in compensation, an increase in demand. You've also got that real switch from probably five years ago, we want a data scientist to actually we want a deep domain expert with NLP. We need someone with computer vision. We need someone very strong in AI. Um, so that data science function has now become you know the, the substrates of that has become more specialist um and uh, beyond that on the more classic data engineering side analytics engineers they're still in demand i think with automation self-service and some of the tooling that's been released they've you know they, they don't need as big a teams but they definitely need people to deploy you know dbt some with deep cloud experience um and i suppose that I mentioned earlier about that kind of infrastructure led data DevOps. We've seen data ops has been a new kind of phrase that's been coined. ML ops engineers, so people with very strong kind of cube flow, the ML flow piece. Um, and yeah. obviously the AI product piece, as I mentioned, definitely for companies earlier on in their journey, startups, I think, who want someone to own a product roadmap, generally understands data, AI, those roles are in demand. Um, and as long as they've got their domain knowledge with hands-on skills, they will be hired. And I think the most in demand are software engineers with that full stack experience. So with that data piece of data dev, basically data developers, someone that understands the business, understands building products from the ground up, um, so they're the main ones. I think that's where we've seen a lot of appetite um, for those type of people. Yeah, and I, I think we're seeing a very similar where it's, we, we kind of, I don't know if we coined the term, but we've been using the term uh, data developer uh, for a mm. while. And I think a big piece of it is that, you know, that full stack engineer, the ones that have to deal with data, deal with airflow and all of the other stack that go, you know, Kubernetes and mm. ML flow and Kubeflow, and they're trying to figure out how do we build that right data platform. 
or do we buy the data platform? Do we integrate with Databricks or Snowflake or BigQuery? What what you know what does that look like? Are super in demand. Like, but to your point earlier point, there's it's do more with less. So I want those people to be able to do not only some of the DevOps or platform engineering, but I want them to also be able to do some of the data, which is not necessarily the same data the skill sets. So I think it's gonna the, the market is. Uh, going to be horribly disappointed when they hire somebody they think can do everything because, yeah. you know, master of all, you know, uh, you know, or master of none, uh, but expert in all or whatever that saying yeah. is, it just doesn't work out. So you're completely, you're completely yeah. right. And I think if we think back to, you'd have those very siloed uh, BI teams, you'd have the BI analyst, the data analyst, you have the data engineer, you'd have the, and actually what you're seeing now, and this has been happening for a couple of years now, those roles are becoming merged. And I think that's courtesy of analytics engineering and Fishtown with DBT. I think that has created that siloed area. And that's basically moved data engineering to more of that infrastructure led, the Kubernetes, the kind of the orchestration piece, the, the containerization piece. And that's where we've seen that. And data ops is now, data and DevOps is still, you know, if you're a DevOps engineer, with a strong modern data background, strong tooling, you you are not going to struggle to find work. And I think that's now tipped over into the ML piece with ML ops. So yeah, it's an interesting space. And yeah, it just boils down to how big these teams will get versus what we probably were used to them in the past. So so let's let's bring it home here and uh, do some kind of crystal ball. Where where do you think things go with the market from here for the rest of the year and into twenty four? More confidence, definitely more confidence towards the end of this year, running through the fall, I think, till Thanksgiving. Um, 2024 budgets are obviously already being put in place now, uh, and all the signs are um, they are going to hire, they are going to grow. We are definitely, and we've already seen it, a consolidation of those, I suppose, less intricate data roles, not taking away what insight analysts, BI analysts, and data analysts ultimately do, but automation uh, and AI is going to see those roles displaced. Um, and obviously, AI is going to be front and center from all these conversations. Uh, companies bringing in LLMs, how are they incorporating almost like AI as a service into their own business? Um, VC activity, I think, will we'll continue to uh, gather momentum. Uh, I think they're going to be more measured in terms of what they're investing in we've i think we talked a while back yeah. about some of the money that's being exchanged for companies that you scratch your head slightly thinking have they overpaid or have they got a steal here and i yeah. think you're going to see new companies coming in uh, and i think you're going to see some companies quietly going away because i think their run rate their product won't match up um I think it's been exciting you know, I, I say this to everyone i speak to yes it's been a humbling year for those in recruitment a lot of people have been put out of work through no fault of their own but i think it's made us leaner it's made us more in, you know more uh, in tune with how to scale again rather than just let's hire as many people as we can and let's just hope they work yeah no i i agree and i, I think to your point with the vcs I, I i'm seeing the activity for new funding seed round type funding starting to pick up i i think it's still been a lot slower than I expected for this year, given that you know usually in a down economy, it's a great time to start something new. That the larger companies are taking down rounds because the valuations did, you know, as we talked about previously, the valuations just got crazy. And having looked at a lot of that and gone, you know, even seen it from the outside when I've evaluated and advised companies, I'm like. Your, your value, why would you take a valuation like that? It's just going to yeah. lead to disappointment. I, I think it's a good time to take a smaller valuation and build upon that and, and build the real business. And I, th I think that's a, that's a big piece of it. Um, but, you know, again, in the last second here, you know, where can they find more about DataWorks and how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, awesome. We, uh, we're really active on LinkedIn. We've obviously got a 
a website with all the details. We, we're hosts of a podcast as well. So uh, we can obviously tag some uh, notes in the comments for this show. But yeah, we're, we're pretty active. Um, I say we, we work across the Europe, UK, and I, I myself focus on the North American space. We're pretty active at events, roundtables. So yeah, you'll be able to find us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That roundtable that we did that you uh, invited yeah. me to down in New York was awesome. Like, so if mm-hmm. anybody out there gets an invite to one of the roundtables, go because it's it's no bs all data all the time and some really smart people around the table which was fantastic so hey alex again thank you for joining me i really appreciate you being on and you know it's always fun to to talk data and talk you know where is the market going for the skill sets i really appreciate it yeah likewise rob i had enjoy myself thanks very much for the invite And thank you to all of you for watching The Analyst Angle, powered by The Cube. I really appreciate you sitting here and listening to this. Hopefully you caught something new and learned something out of this. Uh, We're going to continue to bring my friends and colleagues and former colleagues and others on to The Analyst Angle to really extract the signal from the noise of what's going on and help point you in the right direction. So hopefully you got something out of this and some of the research that we're doing. We'll be back. I really appreciate it. And thanks for joining.